So uh, we've taken the last six months to really kind of look at things where everything is, and I've made the decision not to run for president on the Republican ticket in 2024. And obviously, a lot goes into that decision, but um, it's been quite an adventure, but not the end of the adventure by any means. Uh, that is Republican Governor Chris Sununu announcing on CNN appropriately that he's not running for the presidency of the United States, something you don't see a lot of. Announcements that you're not running for the presidency of the United States. But according to reports, the uh, Republican governor, son of John Sununu, um, long ago Republican governor, White House official, says that he believes that he can do more to stop Trump by not running for the presidency than he could do by actually running for the presidency. I don't think he could do much to stop Trump uh, running for the presidency, I've got to say. But uh, politics is a crazy business, isn't it? Uh, And um, full of crazy people and egos and crazy, crazy things. Well, uh, I've got a uh, a lot for you. That just happened this morning on the the CNN not so long ago because, uh, you know, they... uh, Mm -mm -mm -mm. He has passed, they're announcing, on the 2024 presidential bid. And I'm sure, you know, most of America is like, oh, no, I can't. Gosh, Chris Sununu is not in. Now what are we going to do? I can't I can't stand it. It's it's uh, so sad that New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu is not running for the presidency of the United States. And now I'm not sure if the Republicans stand a chance, you know, Uh, because uh, there it is. It's a it's a crazy time. (laughs) Uh, uh, uh. He's an anti-Trump uh, Republican, a, a Trump person, and, and he says that uh, he um, um, is not running. So what does that mean to the race? means uh, pretty much nothing, I think, is what it means. But thanks for your announcement, and thanks for making it on CNN. What, uh, morning joke wasn't available? Is that, is that what was going on there? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah, uh, so that's uh, that's okay. But he is uh, he's another Republican. You know, uh, Squishy is a New Hampshire rhino Republican, and you know, old uh, school uh, Bush era Republican family, and and uh, he's um, anti-Trump, and he plans on joining the anti joining the anti-Trump forces, according to reports. You know, that's the uh, the thing. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Anti-Trump candidate and all of that. Now he's. Now, he's not a candidate, but he's still anti-Trump. All right, so enough uh, enough about him because he was irrelevant before, and now he's actually more irrelevant. Hey, how can you become more irrelevant? Go on CNN and announce that you're not running for president while you're governor of a uh, state the size of a large parking lot outside of a Target store. That's the that's a, It's a lovely state, though. It is a lovely state. So we've got uh, an update for you on the FBI, which is a crooked organization. I'm sorry to have to report but there it is, and they're going after the whistleblowers. A lot of whistleblowers coming forward trying to blow the whistle, which is what whistleblowers do, in case you were curious. And, and, um, and the FBI is pursuing, assailing, uh, seeking to undermine, uh, threatening the whistleblowers because, you know, there are a lot of crooks over there, and they got, um, they've gotten uh, very political at the FBI, and it's a terrible and tragic thing. But there are some remarkable developments and some revolting developments also, I got to say. And, um, well, we have audio for you of the Speaker of the entire House of Representatives, Kevin McCarthy. He was speaking. He was. Did you notice any grammatical errors in his uh, statements today? I noticed two in one sentence in the first one, <laughs> first one that I heard. But that's okay. People like him. And uh, so we got that going for us. And Congresswoman... Uh, Anna Paulina Luna, you know, Anna Paulina Luna, uh, uh, it is, it's an old song, Anna Paulina Luna, and she, uh, she says, uh, interestingly, that uh, the FBI, she said she just left a meeting, a House Oversight meeting yesterday, and she tweeted, she said the FBI is afraid that their informant, you know, who's squealing on the Biden family and, and uh, went to the FBI and said Joe Biden, when he was vice president, took $5 million dollars from a foreign actor, um, and the idea was that uh, it would influence policy, and uh, I'm sure it did. I mean, it's $5 million. It's not like uh, 20 bucks. It's a lot of money. So just left the meeting for House Democrats, said Congresswoman Luna. The FBI is afraid their informant will be killed if unmasked. That's uh, what uh, she said in her tweet. It's right there in writing. I'm reading it for you. 
uh, will be killed if unmasked. So I, I got to assume that the only people that would be offended by this would be the Biden family. So the concern is on the part of the FBI that the Biden family will kill the informant to keep their millions of dollars, their ill-gotten gains, their their corrupt Biden organized crime family racket going. That's uh, what's being implied here by an elected member of Congress, the House of Representatives, and uh, and saying that the FBI and and it's true you gotta you gotta look at what they're saying. Well, we can't give you the document. We can't make it public because it would compromise sources and methods, which normally is like spy stuff, right? And uh, overseas spies and and uh, somebody in the Kremlin is your source. And if you reveal the source, then Putin will kill the guy in the Kremlin, right? But now the Kremlin is apparently the White House. So now we're afraid that, uh, according to this, that's the only conclusion you can come to. Uh, and if you engage in a bit of deductive reasoning, it doesn't take very, take very long. The FBI is afraid that their informant would be killed. Who is their informant informing on? Well, on the Biden family. Well, who would uh, kill him? Well... Uh, you know, is there anybody other than the Biden family that has a dog in this fight? Uh, who else would be would be hurt by this, be harmed by this? It would be the Biden family. So if unmasked, the FBI is afraid their informant would be killed for informing on the Biden family. Presumably it would be the Biden family that would pose the threat to the man's life. Uh, we, we're told reliably that it's a man and not a woman. Uh, members of Congress are refer- have referred to him him after uh, being briefed on it and uh, so on. So we're pretty sure it's not a woman. However, at the Associated Press, for example, that could be a little bit squishy because they put out new guidance in their style guide. They call it a style guide. It's not It's not about fashion or clothing or anything like that. It's writing style and what words you should use and turns of phrase you should use and what turns of phrase you might avoid. And the Associated Press put out uh, an addition to their style guide, an update to their style guide, which is used in pretty much every newsroom in the United States, America, and beyond. And in their new style guide, you're not to refer to transgender ideology or refer to transgenderism as transgenderism because the ism, ISM, seems to imply that it is an ideology, a set of beliefs. Um, and, uh, you know, so uh, the Associated Press is engaging. And it's wonderful, the Heritage Foundation, the Daily Signal, has a great piece on it today on what the Associated Press is doing and naturally comparing it to George Orwell appropriately and rightly comparing it to George Orwell uh, and the manipulation of language and doublespeak and all of this. And I'll share that with you too, Uh, but I digress. Let's get back to the Biden family threatening to murder people now uh, because, you know, the FBI says that they're... Uh, sources and methods would be compromised and the man's life would be in danger because uh, Hunter Biden might show up, you know, scaling up the trellis at night with a dagger in his teeth uh, and uh, and a bandana on his head and uh, kill the person to keep everything good for the, for the Biden family. So that's uh, pretty amazing. So the FBI afraid the informant will be killed if unmasked based on the information that he's brought forward about the Biden family. Just to button that up, because <laughs> because so honestly, what, where's the threat? The threat is obviously the Biden family. The FBI believes that the Biden family goes around killing people. Apparently, so Christopher Ray should be asked under oath whether they have any information about the Biden family assassinating people who might be a threat to their ongoing uh, international criminal operations and money laundering schemes, right? And pay pay for play uh, because that's uh, you know. Is it pay for play or pay to play? Pay to play? Pay to play. Yeah, Michael thinks pay to play also. Yeah, pay to play. Okay. Uh, that's fair enough. So we got uh, that going for us, and uh, that's pretty crazy. So we got Congressman Comer for you, who was on the television, and he held a bit of a press conference uh, yesterday. Not a lengthy one, but but a press conference. And then he was on the um, Fox News Channel last night. He's on Newsmax. Uh, well, he was on Newsmax in the last hour this morning, the 8 a.m. hour Eastern time. And uh, so we got that going for us. Uh, just uh, just amazing. Oh, and there's a, a story, you know, the National Security Advisor. This is a pretty wacky story. Jake Sullivan, you know him? He's an anemic lad, and uh, he doesn't frighten anyone. If he has a, a cat at home, his cat is not afraid of him, much less Russia or China or North Korea or Iran. No one's afraid of him. He strikes uh, fear in the hearts of no one and nothing. His goldfish isn't afraid of him. He's got a goldfish. It laughs at him when he comes into the house. Uh, but uh, I talked about this briefly a couple of weeks ago. Someone broke into or sashayed into Jake Sullivan's home 
uh, and uh, he lives here in the Washington metropolitan area, of course. And I mentioned this, and I was like, well, wait a minute. He's got secret service protection. He's the national security advisor. So what the heck is going on with that? How can somebody just walk into the home of the national security advisor, anemic though he may be? Uh, and it uh, turns out uh, we've, uh, we've got an update uh, for you on the story. Secret service agents didn't see an intruder get into Biden officials' home because they were distracted by their cell phones. If you can imagine. Can you imagine such a thing, <laughs> people being distracted by their cell phones? I find that hard to imagine. But the United States Secret Service, uh, not a red-letter day for the Secret Service. Secret Service agents missed an intruder at the, uh, the Biden officials' home. Because they were on their cell phones. They were on their, they were on their phones. Now, now, unclear whether they were texting or watching TikTok videos or uh, what was going on. I don't know if it may be Pornhub. It's, it's hard to say. Probably not. But um, it, was, it happened in April. An apparently intoxicated man, what was your first clue, got inside the uh, security, uh, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan's home. <laughs> and, uh, and the agents were outside on their personal cell phones didn't realize the intruder got in until he had already left, according to the Cable News Network, CNN. News used to be their middle name long ago. So uh, Secret Service agents missed an intruder, got into the Biden, Biden officials' home in April because they were distracted by their personal cell phones. Now, that's good. Now, when we traded this story, Michael Piercy and I traded this story uh, last night, and uh, and Michael sent a funny little uh, a funny little thing. It was, and he sent it. We sent it on our on our cell phones. I usually use my iPad though. And see, when Michael and I first started working together a long time ago now, um, Michael, I would come in and do the radio show, right? And Michael would sit across from me in a studio, right where he's sitting right now, although it was a different studio down the hall, just down the hall, not very far. And and Michael would sit there. Uh, I won't give all the details because he's up on the roof and then he came down and then and then, and then he's sitting across from me, and I'm doing the radio show, and he's got his feet up on the desk, and it's a high top desk. You sit in these high top chairs, you know, and he's got his feet up on the desk, and he's got his cell phone in front of his, uh, and his thumbs are uh, working away furiously uh, because he's texting during the show and during the commercial breaks, but not just during the commercial breaks. I'm actually talking to the microphone, and he couldn't care less. He's over here you know, texting with his transgender friend or something <laughs> like that. And, and, uh, and, my, and finally, after a long, long time, I finally had to say, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, Michael, um, you're sitting over there, I noticed texting on your phone and stuff and uh, not paying attention to what's going on in the studio. And we're doing a live radio show. And I said, um, you know, when, you, you, when you're at work, you see, you know, when, when you're at home, you do what you want when you're out in town. But when you're at work, you work, right? And, uh, and he looked kind of shocked because, you know, he comes from Maryland and things. And, uh, and, uh, and he went to the University of Maryland and, and he was kind of shocked by this. He said, he said he couldn't believe that. He said and he texted, uh, he sent the story, Secret Service agents didn't see an intruder. Uh, get into Biden officials' home because they were distracted by their cell phones, business insider. And he wrote, uh, if only Chris had been there to tell them that when they come to work, comma, they work. And I got it immediately, of course, because he still reminds me every now and then, and I still have to remind him every now and then, that when you're at work, although not as much, you know, uh, that when you're at work, uh, you know, you work. That's uh, There are people paying you and everything. And uh, you're expected to do a job and to work, not to sit here and text with your friends because there's a difference between being at work and not being at work. Um, but it's, it's true. Maybe that somebody, they should hire me to go uh, talk to the Secret Service and I could tell them it'd be a short speech, very short speech, <laughs> gather all the Secret Service people in a stadium or something and uh, give tell the story about Jake Sullivan's house and, you know, guys are outside and women too. I, I wouldn't want to rule that out. Uh, on their cell phones while a drunk Democrat just barges into the home of the National Security Advisor and then he does whatever he does and he leaves, right? And the Secret Service agents are outside and they're like, hey, you you see this one on TikTok? (laughs) Uh, You know, the country in so many ways is just not what it used to be.
Hey, Chris here with some exciting news. Now you can listen to me live on the WMAL app. Doesn't matter if you're in your car, in the office, on the go. The WMAL app delivers crystal clear around-the-clock news coverage anywhere with cell service or Wi-Fi. So don't miss a second of your favorite shows. Download the WMAL app today on the Apple App Store or at Google Play Store. I have a, a, a you know, a, an iPad, a mini iPad, an iPhone, and a BlackBerry. All of them are eventually smashed with ball-peen hammers by uh, campaign staffers Hillary, Diane, Rodham, Clinton. There's a lot of crooked in our politics, isn't there? We got... Joe Biden and millions of dollars from a foreign actor, and the FBI is afraid that, I guess, I, I mean, I, I can't come to any other conclusion that the FBI is afraid, based on what Congresswoman Luna said after being briefed on Capitol Hill yesterday, if the FBI is afraid that their, their uh, confidential informant would be killed, uh, who else would have any vested interest in killing this person, silencing this person? other than the family uh, led by the President of the United States, Joseph Robinette Biden, uh, who is, uh, you know, find themselves, the family that finds themselves in the crosshairs of the FBI investigation of a grand jury in Delaware and uh, so on. So if you just, if the confidential source were no longer available, you know, because of a tragic set of circumstances, that would be, that'd be very sad for everybody uh, except for the Biden family. So... What kind of, what am I supposed to? Now, I, I, I want to, I, I told you about the story about the Secret Service allowing the uh, drunk lunatic to wander in the home of, uh, into the home of um, Joe Biden's national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, <clears throat> who, if you were doing a cartoon version of Jake Sullivan, um, what kind of animal would he be? Would he be? He'd be a, I think he'd be a ferret. I think he might be a ferret. Some kind of a weasel. Ferrets are in the weasel family, right? I think that's right. And um, I don't know if you can hear it or not. We have construction going on in the building. Stop the hammering! There's a lot of uh, going to be a lot of noise uh, today because we're getting new studios built. New studios are being built uh, because of the fabulous success of this wonderful radio station, the Mothership, WMAL in Washington D.C. Um, from which we're heard globally. I was going to, in fact, I got an uh, I got an email from uh, listener listeners in Sweden, in Sweden. Uh, but I got to move on to the uh, to the other the other stories here, because the Secret Service will tell you, you know, it's not. Hey, don't blame us that some drunk walked into Jake Sullivan's house. You see, the Biden people won't let the Secret Service do what they want to do. Put sensors around the house, motion sensors, and you know, and the lawn and things like that. Um, basically, they just want transportation from the Secret Service because it's statusy, you know. And then when they get there, they don't have any alarms or sensors on the property, so it's like, hey, uh, you know. Also, I've got more for you on this on uh, on what's going on with the Secret Service detail at the White House. That's coming up. Yeah, for sure, from Sweden. Yeah, the story about uh, the drunk uh, Democrat breaking into Jake's house. Well, I don't know if he broke in. He walked in. He was uh, drunk. And the Secret Service was outside, and they were on their phones. And TikTok can be quite enthralling. Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor for the United States of America, confronted the man inside his house and told him to leave. That's probably a good idea. The Washington Post first reported, the Secret Service agents guarding Sullivan's house didn't even realize someone had gotten inside the home until Sullivan had uh, the confused man leave and then went outside to tell the agents what had happened, according to the Post. Sullivan and his family weren't hurt. Did the guy have a ball-peen hammer? Because I know in in San Francisco that happens uh, sometimes. Sources briefed on the incident told CNN they, uh, that uh, an internal investigation found the agents on the protective detail were on their cell phones at the time. CNN reported the agents will likely be disciplined. 
Does that mean uh, spanking? Does that spank me, spank me, and uh, may lose their federal security clearances. That's a bridge too far. That's too much. Now, I mean, honestly, the 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 truth is, I know this because I know people, and I talk to people. Uh, these these Democrat people, they won't allow them to put security systems around the house. You want us to secure the house. And you just want us to do it by sitting in vehicles out front and really give you a ride. You know, you want to go to the 7-Eleven to get uh, a glass tube and a brass screen and uh, a mouthpiece and some chapstick uh, and uh, <laughs> a rubber mouth guard. <laughs> and uh, and that's they, they see it as a status uh, limousine service. Oh, yes, that's my secret service detail. But they literally will not allow them to put sensors around the house because, you know, then they might find out stuff. Something like that. Crazy. Now, let me tell you about this. Let me tell you this. Um, because I know people and I talk to people. I have beers with people. I eat food with people. I, I just talk to people even without beer and food. Uh, the White House Secret Service detail, the presidential detail, not a happy place these days. Not a happy place. Uh, I'm, I'm told reliably that morale White House Secret Service de- detail, the presidential detail, very low. Morale is very low. Um, what I was told that uh, people there now can't remember a time when morale was lower among Secret Service um, and uh, agents and protective detail. And that the attrition rate is unusually high for the uh, presidential Secret Service detail. It's uh, Again, this is your line of work. That's quite statusy. You're on the White House, the presidential detail, that's uh, kind of a thing, right? But I'm told that uh, morale is very low, that the attrition rate is very high. Uh, and get a load of this. Listen to this now. A big topic of conversation among Secret Service personnel is Joe Biden being, um, you know, the $5 million from a foreign um, agent, the millions of dollars going to the Biden family cover from coffers from China and communist Chinese-affiliated sources, the no-show job for Hunter Biden in Ukraine and Joe Biden, you know, all the corruption, all the things that you know, members of the Secret Service detail know. And uh, I am told that this is uh, not an unusual topic of conversation. And honestly, let me throw this in because I was not told this, but I, uh, it occurred to me when I was in the course of this conversation, in the midst of this conversation, If you're a uh, Secret Service agent and your job one terrible day may be to jump between the president and and an assailant, um, and somewhere in the back of your mind you're thinking, this guy's on China's payroll and he's on the payroll of, uh, what was it, Romania, some Romanian um, evildoer, and, and he's lining his pockets and his whole family lining their pockets, this is... You know, this is if you if you're looking at it and thinking this is a corrupt family, and I am in a position in a job where I might have to, you know, put myself in harm's way to protect and defend. Um, you got to be well. In any case, I'm told that this is the last part. I'm adding myself, but I'm told that the uh, the stories about the corruption and the millions of dollars and China and Romania and Ukraine and Russia that. Uh, this whole uh, story and the macro is a, a, um, a, a topic of conversation among agents and that um, morale is low and that attrition is high. So that's, what I, uh, so that's what I wanted to share with you. I wanted to share that stuff. Now, speaking of uh, Democrats, you know what they've done to San Francisco? San Francisco, it uh, used to be one of the world's great cities. It, 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 it still is potentially, but the Democrats have run it into the ground in so many different ways that, um, you know, it's, it's become unlivable. It's, it's, uh, people are fleeing. Also, just see, what is the, uh, the real estate story, the real estate story? Real estate values in the city of San Francisco have plummeted by, what was the number? $265 billion. $265 billion. Uh, property values plummeting in San Francisco because uh, of, you know, uh, all the crazy, drunk, drug-addicted, mentally challenged, homeless or not uh, lunatics wandering the streets. It's an open-air lunatic asylum in San Francisco, 
as you know, the, it's very unpleasant, and I apologize, but the, the uh, human feces everywhere, and, um, and that is, uh, that's a problem. <laughs> uh, the, the spent hypodermic needles, the, the, you know, the, it's, they've turned it into a filthy, awful, terrible, because liberalism is not really liberalism, it's leftism, and they're completely insane. Um, and so real estate values, predictably, and, and uh, you know, it, it is very predictable, but they don't care because it's all about their ideology, right? The value of real estate in, in uh, San Francisco plummeted by $265 billion, and nobody's doing anything about it because what's the uh, explanation, Michael? Democrats. Democrats is the uh, the actual correct answer. Uh, just extraordinary. Hundreds of billions of dollars in real estate value lost because of Democrat party decisions, policies, values, if you can refer to them as values. So uh, we got that going for us. Now let me get to the uh, let me get to the story out of San Francisco because this is this is a humdinger. Can you say humdinger then uh, when you're talking about San Francisco? Local Channel 12 in San Francisco. San Fra- Here's the headline. San Francisco is now, quote, worse than Afghanistan, end quote. Immigrant store owner says after losing $100,000 to burglars. Now, the immigrant is obviously from Af- Afghanistan, and he moved to San Francisco figuring that'll be nice. I saw that in a movie one time, and it looks real pretty, you know, Lombard Street and all that stuff, trolley cars. A man who immigrated to the United States in the late 1980s and opened a store in San Francisco in 2003 now reportedly says that the California city is, quote, worse than his home country of Afghanistan. The co-owner of cigarettes are cheaper, and it's the letter R, because when he came here he learned that Democrats like to be illiterate and misspell things and use numbers and letters instead of words. Cigarettes are cheaper. That's the name of his store. In San Francisco, San Francisco's Richmond district, uh, he's referred to only as Zaid. Zaid. That, that's it. No last name because, you know, I'm going to guess like Mohammed might be in there somewhere. And he said uh, in the report he's only Zaid. Uh, speaking out after burglars stole roughly $80,000 in merchandise and $20,000 in cash from his store last week. Cigarettes aren't that much cheaper, I guess. Zaid uh, reportedly claimed that a uh, little more than a half dozen thieves smashed the store windows last Tuesday. Uh, more than a half dozen. That's six for uh, Democrats listening along. So more than six Democrats smashed the windows of the immigrants' store. He came to the United States to get away from lunacy. And uh, then, you know, the Democrat Party showed up. And they had plenty of time, around 20 minutes, to ransack his store. They know the police won't do anything, he said. And he knows that the police won't do anything, too. And it's, uh, you know, because the Democrats are anti-police and pro-crime and pro-criminal. So the San Francisco Police Department reportedly confirmed to Fox News that officers arrived on the the scene around 2.44 a.m. after uh, the burglary. That's, uh, you know, it's uh, late at night. They're, they were probably over at Pelosi's house checking to see if there are any guys with hammers over there. But um, he, went on, he went on to uh, to talk about the differences between San Francisco and Afghanistan, and he made a perfectly good, uh, perfectly good observation. He said, at least in Afghanistan, the Taliban will cut your hand off, and people are afraid to commit such crime. That's what uh, Zaid said here said politicians need to get a grip on this uh, city because it's worse than Afghanistan or Iraq, he said. And uh, it's true, at least in Afghanistan, they'll cut your hand off. And that that serves as a deterrent, uh, to be sure. Because, you know, if you're a teenager and you're thinking about looting and you think, well, you know, they're gonna, but they'll cut my hand off. When I was in Saudi Arabia in 1990, spent... Uh, several months, three months in Dharan in the eastern province. And we would go to downtown Dammam on Fridays to get a shawarma, you know, maybe, maybe buy a, uh, a hat, uh, you know, a little rug, something like that. And they had uh, what they call Chop Chop Square, Chop Chop Square there. It's the uh, uh, Dammam is the judicial center for the eastern province. 
in uh, Saudi Arabia. And on Fridays at lunchtime, they would bring out the convicted criminals and they would, um, you know, cut the hands off and chop the heads off, chop, chop square. They call it chop, chop square. And uh, we went down every Friday for three months and never got to, uh, they never decapitated. And we were told that they cut that out because there were so many Americans around and American media. I was media at the time. And, but there were, you know, military, like 500,000 American troops and uh, getting ready to kick Saddam Hussein's boys out of Kuwait. And, um, and so we would go to chop, and they, and they had, but uh, they had these neat knives. One of the guys showed me the knives, these neat knives with a barb on the end, a hook on the end, kind of about this long, you know, maybe a foot long, a little less than that knife with a, a hook and a barb on the end. And they stick the barb. I'm demonstrating like you can see me. <laughs> Michael can see. And they stick the, stick the barb in your wrist there. And then the, it has a loop on the end and they go like that around it, circle it, just whoop, and your hand falls off. And they have a, and then the crowd cheers, Yay! And, and they have a, 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 a vat of boiling oil there, of boiling oil, and they take your arm while you're screaming, and they jam it into the boiling oil uh, to cauterize it, you know, to stop the bleeding. They're not trying to be cruel, they're stopping the bleeding, you know, the old-fashioned way, so like that. And uh, so Zaid says, yeah, at least in Afghanistan, they chop your hand off for that, and it's true, that does serve as a deterrent, no, no doubt about that, you know. So we got that going for us. All right, let's go to, uh, I'm just uh, telling uh, stories. I'm not even getting to the news story. Well, a couple of news stories, too. Uh, get, getting to some news stories, too. <laughs> I got a crazy story out of the Washington Post today, too, about um, uh, a grandmother uh, and a mother being murdered by her daughter and her granddaughter. And let me just give you one clue. Chainsaw. Okay, that's coming up. That's uh, that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Oh, San Francisco dropped off. He dropped off the line. That's uh, what's with that. All right, I'll get to this one. All right, here's the Washington Post. A uh, woman accused of dismembering, comma, grilling. Grilling. And that doesn't mean interrogating. That means putting on the Weber grill, all right? Um, woman accused of dismembering, comma, grilling remains of 71-year-old mother. This is, for us in, in Afghanistan, you know what happened to these people. A Hyattsville woman just outside of Washington, D.C. in Maryland in Prince George's County. A Hyattsville woman has been charged in the killing of her 71-year-old mother and accused of uh, working with another family member to dismember the victim with a chainsaw before trying to incinerate her remains on a grill. I can tell you right now that's not going to work. You know, According to charging documents, the Washington Post reports, Investigators described a grisly scene found inside the home on the 200 block of Hill Road in Landover, Maryland. Uh, I like that they give the address. If you're going to give the block, you should give the house, uh, the house number specifically, don't you think? When officers were called to check on the welfare of Margaret Elizabeth Craig on Friday, 71 years old, according to charging documents filed in Prince George's County, uh, the district court there, as officers checked on the house, they discovered, quote, blood and tissue on the floor end quote, tissue, and three garbage bags that contained human remains believed to belong to Craig, the court files say. Police later discovered uh, uh, and arrested Craig's daughter, 44-year-old Candace Craig, on charges of first-degree murder and second-degree murder. How many people did she murder now? Because they got that whole thing. First-degree murder. And charged her granddaughter, 19-year-old Salia Hardy, as an accomplice. Hardy indeed. As an accomplice after the killing, the judge ordered the mother and daughter held without bond Monday afternoon. That seems advisable, doesn't it? Yeah. Prince George's County State's Attorney Aisha Braveboy described the case as unlike any that she had seen. To say it's disturbing is an understatement, Braveboy, a Democrat, said at a news conference after the bail review hearing on Monday. Hey, you know, this is uh, what the Democrat family uh, calls family values um, and a chainsaw. All right, we, of course, have uh, we have the FBI and uh, activity on Capitol Hill yesterday and Congressman Comer and, and uh, Christopher Wray charged with contempt of Congress, perhaps, and then he'll go to lunch. Um, so uh, lots and lots of things to get to in our remaining time. 
Uh, will the Biden family kill the confidential informant if they find out who it is? Because the FBI is concerned. We got gender fluid yearbook and and a great story out of Cincinnati on uh, biological women. Get in trouble for saying that now. That goes with the Associated Press, too. Let's go to uh, the telephones right now. Let's go to Larry calling from Falls Church, Virginia. Lawrence, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Good morning, Chris. Hey, Larry. Larry here. I know you're focusing today on a lot of security issues, the lapses of the Secret Service, the FBI threatening a whistleblower. Uh, but maybe there's a, uh, a ray of sunshine in your life today, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> the American traitor, the disgraced, infamous FBI special agent Robert Hansen, passed away. He died in Supermax Prison, Florence, Colorado. Now, Supermax, as you know, is where we put the baddest of the bad, and that's where you're isolated 23 and a half hours a day and all. Um, so my question is this, Chris, and perhaps you or one of your astute listeners can track this down for us. What did Robert Hansen have on Hillary? <laughs> did he hang himself in his cell while the video cameras were not working and there were no guards around? Is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I heard things. I heard things. Um, well, Hansen was uh, 79 years old. Um, uh, and he. Uh, and you're right, in uh, Supermax in Florence, Colorado, a, you know, a, a prison for the worst of the worst. And he was... Um, a, uh, an FBI guy who was spying for the Soviet Union uh, and for Russia, and uh, he died in uh, in Supermax at the age of 79. And and you're right, that is kind of a ray of sunshine into our day, isn't it, Larry? It's it's a bad guy who got what was coming to him, and we don't see enough of that, do we? You are correct. He lived too long. Yeah, 79 years old. He got, uh, you know, about a million and a half, I think $1.4 million, and... He got diamonds from the from the uh, Soviet Union and cash from the Soviet Union, and uh, and he betrayed his country. He was a uh, a traitor of the first order, and um, and he was caught. Uh, they even made a movie about it, didn't they? They make a movie about it, Larry. Yes, yeah, two of them, I think at least. One is Breach, and uh, I'm not sure what the other one was. Right, and uh, yeah, he was. Uh, you know, he was an FBI guy, and he was a bad guy. Um, and uh, in the end, the FBI caught him, of course, and uh, threw him in the Hoosgau, in the can, and uh, that's where he died. <laughs>